So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this edition of the NITEX colloquium. This will be the, the, the last colloquium for the year because now things are re relaxing towards the, 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 the festive season. <clears throat> so this afternoon, uh, we have a team of speakers. We have Dr. Liam Baker and Phil uh, Labuscan uh, with us, and they will speak essentially about the Mathematics Olympics. Yeah, And um, uh, Dr. Baker uh, did his uh, undergraduate and honors degree at UCT, and then he did his master and his PhD at Stellenbosch University, where he's a lecturer in, uh, in mathematics at the moment. Yeah. And um, and he's uh, part of the uh, one of the trainers for the uh, international mathematics Olympic team of, uh, of 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 South Africa. Yeah, and so is uh, Phil Labuscania, who started also studied. I think uh, ah sorry, I've forgotten. Um, is also from uh, from Cape Town, and he has been involved for many many years in training the South Africa team since more than 15 years, I think, since 2005. Yeah? <clears throat> and he represented himself, South Africa, and mathematical uh, Olympics as, as leader and deputy leader and, um, <clears throat> and many, many other uh, mathematics competition. Yeah? And at the moment, he's also the director of the Junior International Mathematics Competition Organizing Body for, for South Africa. Yeah? So, and, and this evening, they, they kindly agreed to share with us a little bit the, the, the context of these mathematical contests uh, in, in South Africa and, uh, and worldwide, yeah. So, uh, Liam and Phil, I'm not sure who of you will start, but um, yeah. we're looking forward to your, to your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's about mathematical contests in South Africa but also then Africa and then the worldwide. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Um, so the talk is largely based on the recent paper that we wrote uh, with some colleagues. Uh, it's titled Mathematical Competitions in Africa, Their Prevalence and Relevance to Students and Teachers. Okay, so what we have on this slide is the South African grassroots contests. Um, so the, which events they are, when they were founded, the grades, uh, of learners participating in them, uh, whether there's resources available for them, the number of students on average per year taking part in it, the number of schools on average per year taking part in it, whether the contest requires an entry fee or not, and whether the contest has sponsors or not. Uh, so the first one is the South African Mass Olympiad, which was founded in 1966. Uh, uh, the next one is the UST Mathematical uh, Competition, which was founded in 1977. Uh, then there's the South African Mass Challenge, which was founded in 1986 as the MISA uh, competition. Uh, it only in recent years changed its name to the South African Mass Challenge because it uh, was usually referred to for the first 20 years as uh, just the MISA competition. Uh, then there's the South African Mass Team Competition, which is also a name change. It was founded as the Interprovincial Mass Olympic in 1990. And um, for the last five or so years, it's been called the uh, uh, Team Competition instead of the Interprovincial. Uh, the next one, UPMC, is the University of Pretoria Mass Competition. Then HMC is the Ryzen Maths Competition. And then BM is Beyond Mathematics. And then WMC is the Bits Maths Competition. Uh, so we have um, the dates ranging from 1966, 1977, 1986, uh, 1990, 1991, there's two simultaneously that starts up. And then there's one again 10 years later in 2000. And then there's about 15 years later, another two starting up uh, the Beyond Maths and the uh, Bits Maths Competition. Um, you can see there that most of them are for, well, there's some high school ones, there's some primary school ones, the bits maths competition uh, starts in grade four, runs all the way to grade 12. It also has an undergraduate section for, uh, for first, second, and third year university students, uh, but in this table, it's only represented as grade 12 because uh, the research was only done for uh, school students. Um, and all of them have resources and the uh, numbers of students uh, ranges from 80,000 uh, 80,000, uh, there's 34,000. And then the interprovincial um, have a lower number uh, on 855 because uh, that is more selective competition where the best students on the other competitions are selected towards teams for provinces. Um, and then uh, we couldn't build schools for all of the competitions, but uh, for the South African Mass you have about a thousand schools. And the East Mass only Western Cape based is about 160 schools. And the South African Mass Challenge, which is a primary school, 
one that runs nationally is about 600 schools. Um, and so some of them requires interviews, some of them not. All of them, almost all of them have sponsors, the University of Pretoria one does. Okay, they are, uh, so um, the contests listed in this table are the grassroots contests um, that data was available for uh, to compile statistics. There are also other contests like the Burgess Viscount Competency, Living Mass, Nautilus, and Jim Kopsa events. Um, uh, okay, so in Jim Kopsa's case, uh, those are grassroots and this is, this is available, but the contest for that is actually an international paper. Um, for the others, uh, we don't really have statistics for them. Okay, um, yeah, for myself, when I was in um, school, I started my first mass competition uh, in primary school when I was grade four, uh, participating in the MISA contest, the one that's listed as SMC, the South African Mass Challenge. And then when I'm, uh, I participated in that four years in primary school, and then when I moved to high school, I participated in the UC mass competition, and then also South African Mass Olympiad as well as the Interprovincial Mass Competition, the CPS South African Mass Team Competition, the SM, uh, MTC, as well as a couple of years in the University of Pretoria one. And if memory serves, I also wrote the University of Port Elizabeth one that only existed for about five or so years. And yeah, um, that has actually died away. And uh, the university has also since changed their name as well. Uh, yeah, Liam, which did you participate in when you were at school? Yeah, so I started uh, when I moved to high school. I didn't know about math competitions in primary school, but when I moved to high school, the high school I was at uh, regularly took part in the UCT math competition. So I took part in that. And uh, since then in high school, we also took part in the South African Maths Olympiad a few times, although there were one or two years when my teacher forgot to register us. Um, but I also took part in what was then the Interprovincial Maths Olympiad, uh, now called the SA Maths Team Competition. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to um, participate in the others. Um, notably, the WMC, the Wits Maths Competition, was actually started a few, in 2018 by one of our co-authors, um, yeah, Dr. John Clariv from Joburg. So yeah, that's, that's my participation. Apart from just participating in these events, we've also um, uh, were involved in the other side of setting papers for some of them. So both of us were involved in, well, uh, Liam's still involved, I was involved for 10 years in the South African Mass Olympiad uh, on the um, committee setting the papers. I was involved in the UC Mass competition. Um, I was not involved in the South African Mass Challenge, but yeah, uh, we uh, were involved in provincial as basically leaders or organizers for uh, certain provinces mm -hmm. and yeah and I'm a regional coordinator for Western Cape for the Wits Mass competition and both of us I think is, are involved in setting the paper helping yeah. setting the paper okay um then we can move on I think okay then South Africa's international uh, international participation so there are two teams for South Africa repre uh, that represents us officially as an official national South African teams that is for the Pan-African Mathematical Olympiad uh, and South Africa participated in that since 2000, although it actually started earlier. And then the International Maths Olympiad, uh, where we started participating since 1992. There are also some other South African teams participating overseas, and they are not endowed with official status. Um, we will focus more on the Pan African Maths Olympiad and International Maths Olympiad uh, that do um, enjoy official status. Uh, then there's also some other international contests, uh, like the Iranian Geometry Olympiad, that is a event that runs in each country, so there's no traveling involved, and countries can enter as many as they want in it, um, but there's, uh, you're not really representing your country for it, it's just that it is written across the world and administered, in this case, by Iran, and then there's also international mass assessment for schools that is kind of a similar idea, and then there's also various other organizations and clubs or schools that take teams across for certain international events. Okay. Uh, the team selection process for our official teams for South Africa. So this is for the Pan-African Mathematical Olympiad and the Interna International Mathematical Olympiad. Uh, it consists of five steps to actually for our official teams, and I'm kind of wearing a South African t-shirt from before, from some years ago. Um, so the way to actually make an official South African team uh, consists of five steps. Uh, the first step is to identify talent. Uh, okay. And then the second step is what we call the Stellenbosch camp. The third step is the monthly assignments. Fourth step is what we call the April camp. And then the fifth step is the PAN, PAMA or the IMO with the training camp that usually goes uh, at the start of that. Okay, so uh, 
to firstly, before we get uh, uh, learners to get at the camp, we have to identify talent. So originally the system was set up in 1992. Uh, there was something called the Mathematical Digest that was sent to 5,000 high schools across the country and had a talent search in it um, that uh, was the first round of a talent search uh, in it. And uh, it basically said that if you would like to make a South African team, uh, try these questions, uh, solve them and send them off to UCT and then um, you will get the next round. And it was a, like a postal system. You sent off a round, uh, they mark it, they send you back the next round with the memo for the one you did, as well as um, your action mark script so you can see where you, what you did wrong and where you can improve. Um, and then that was used in combination with the results from a bunch of grassroots competitions. So the South African Mass Olympic results used in mass competition, the uh, Nautilus program, all sorts of things were used um, to identify talent. Um, but uh, in more recent years, uh, what is mostly being used is the South African Mass Olympiad uh, to identify talent. Uh, the mass dodges have kind of unfortunately fallen away. And so the talent search that was run through that has also fallen away. Um, okay, after the talent is identified, uh, we invite about 40 to 60 learners, uh, mainly grade eight to grade 11 to the Stellenbosch camp, which takes place in December uh, each year at the University of Stellenbosch. And this camp consists out of, um, well, it's five days long. Uh, every morning there's a test. And then in the afternoons, there are lectures on the various topics of algebra, combinatorics, uh, geometry, and number theory. And then after this camp finishes, we give them what's called monthly assignments, uh, which was like the talent search of the olden days, uh, but just the more advanced stuff. And at the end of the camp, they get this set of problems. And then they are asked to actually solve these questions uh, over a month's time and then uh, submit the solutions. And then we do this for a couple of months. And then we, from the Stellenbosch camp results, as well as the monthly assigned results, invite, invite approximately 15 learners to what we termed April camp. Yes, we call it the April camp. It doesn't always take place in April, but we just keep on calling it. It takes place either at the end of March or beginning of April. And historically, it has moved around from various universities, various universities. It's been hosted at UCT, it's been hosted at uh, 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 University of Johannesburg, it's been hosted at the University of Victoria, University of Free State, um, University Rose of Portrush, the Rhodes University, Portrush Strum. So now the April camp, we uh, call the April camp uh, by the date or the month rather than which place it hosts because it's just moved around across the country. Okay, and after this, we take the results of this April camp and then we identify the um, teams for South Africa to participate at the Olympiad. The top six at the camp uh, get to um, honor South Africa by their representation at the International Mass Olympiad. And then we also choose a team for the Pan African Mass Olympiad. Um, and yeah, then they're off to the IMO, I can say that always takes place in July. Um, the PAMO moves around. It has been hosted in August, you know, since September, July, June, May, April, January, one year even. So that is a bit harder to pinpoint, but anyway. Um, so we choose since, and usually before the event, we have a, also a final training camp of week long for, for the team members, just to get them in hopefully tip top shape for the actual event. So oh. Um, one of these official events that South Africa takes part in every year is the Pan-African Mats Olympia. It started in 1987, but we've been participating since 2000. Uh, there have been 30 PAMOs so far. Uh, there have been a few years where PAMO didn't happen because of whatever reason. Um, the most often hosts of the PAMO are Morocco, South Africa, Nigeria, and Tunisia. Uh, the last time we hosted was 2019 was the last time South Africa hosted. Um, you Originally, there was four team members in the team that get sent to the panel, but since 2015, that has been changed to 16 members, or at most 16 members, where your team is allowed to have at most three boys and at most three girls. Uh, nominally, this was the change was made to encourage more girl participation in the panel. Um, so how medals work at this competition is that there are two papers that get written, um, the scripts get marked, and everyone gets ranked from highest mark to lowest mark. And then the top 50% of those students get medals, the bottom 50% don't. And for the top 50%, 
they either get a gold, silver, or bronze medal in the ratio one to two to three. Um, so top 50% gets medals, half of them gets bronze, a third of them gets silver, and the top one sixth gets gold. Uh, if you're not top of, part of that top 50%, but you did solve at least one of the questions completely correctly, you get an honorable mention. And uh, there are on average about 10 countries per year at the PAMO. Um, this is a bit uh, less than ideal situation because uh, Africa does have 54 countries. Um, so there's a lot more countries that we would love to have um, involved in the PAMO. I've been involved uh, on like the organizational side of the PAMO since about 2015-ish. Um, some of the possible barriers to, or the reasons for why we have low participation in the panel is that, first of all, it is expensive. Uh, for some reason, flights in Africa uh, cost as much or even more than flying to Europe or somewhere else. Um, so many countries have either the choice between participating in the Pan-African Mats Olympiad and the International Mats Olympiad. And if they don't have money for both, they would rather choose the more pre prestigious competition, which is the International Mats Olympiad. Um, but yeah, we hope to increase these numbers because um, many African countries do not have good uh, competitions in their own countries. Yeah, that's actually part of the problem. Um, some countries start participating in PAMA and then drop out because uh, they get decimal results of PAMA. And that's because they basically don't have in, any internal systems. They yeah. don't have grassroots competitions like South Africa and one or two of the other African countries. Um, yeah, so we can probably move on to the next slide. Oh, although I should probably point out that about 30 countries have actually participated in PAMA at one point or another. Yeah. But you only get 10 together in any specific year. Uh, at most, I think the uh, most in any given year was 13. Yeah, yeah. that sounds about right. 13 was a maximum in one specific year, but more, mostly it's averaging 10 per year. And then here we see the African countries, the national contest development, which we did for the paper. We try to track down which countries have national Olympiads and grassroots competitions of any sort, and then categorize the countries about whether they are well-established or whether competitions internally are well-established in that country, whether there's some medium-sized competitions in the country, or whether they have maybe a small regional competition or a deceased competition or some newborn competitions. So we categorize those together because some countries maybe starts a competition for one or two years and then it also dies. So you can't actually say it's well established if they only run it for two years because you don't know what's going to happen with it. Um, and then Mauritius, for instance, had a national mass in a bit twice, 20 years ago. It only happened twice and it happened in 2001 and 2002, I think, or something. And then it died just two years and that was it. Um, and then some other countries you could find absolutely no information that they had any sort of national competition or even regional competitions. And we tried to do exhaustive searches for this. And then here's the map of Africa. So the countries that are in dark and black are the ones with, that we classified as uh, having well-established competitions. Uh, so this is competitions that have run for at least 10, 20 years. Um, and where they regularly participate in the Pan-African Mass Olympiad and some even participate regularly at the International Mass Olympiad. Um, yeah, so you can get a sense from this map about, it's mostly North, West Africa, and then South Africa, and then it's one country towards the East of Africa um, with the well-established. And then you can see with respect to the broadest sort of desert for the most part, apart from the ones that are well-established, the other countries next door have basically nothing. Um, yeah, anyway, let's move on. Okay, this is South Africa's uh, participation at the Pan-African Math Olympiad. Uh, so I should probably first point out that South Africa sends a B team to the Pan-African Mass Olympic. We do not send our A team. So uh, South Africa took a decision when we start participating in 2000 that it would be pointless sending our, uh, our IMO team members uh, to the Pan-African Mass Olympic because if we send our IMO team members, or the assumption was if we send our IMO team members and they start winning the Pan-African Mass Olympic every single year and uh, take all the gold medals away, then other African countries might become a bit more disheartened. Um, and also, our IMO team members can't really get that much out of the PAMA paper because the level of the PAMA from Mass Olympiad, unfortunately, is quite a bit lower than the International Mass Olympiad. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, the rule is that if uh, a learner has represented South Africa at the IMO, 
then they can't actually represent um, South Africa at the Pan-African Basin of Peter often. Okay, so you can see that we were first eight times. Um, so this is our 18 participations uh, since 2000. We were, um, I don't know, 20 participations by now, of course. Um, and we were in first place eight times, second place uh, seven times, and then third place four times. And then the other participation that we got was fifth place. We never ranked lower than fifth. Okay, and you can see with respect to the gold, silver, and bronze medals, as well as honorable mentions, uh, South Africa is by far in the lead with gold medals and silver medals, and to some extent bronze medals. Um, we are top of all the categories. One year, uh, there was one year when South Africa took all the available gold medals at the Pan African Master Olympic, which is not ideal for the other, uh, for basically encouraging the other African countries. Um, so South Africa, Tunisia, Nigeria, and Morocco does normally well, as well as somewhat Ivory Coast. And thereafter, the results really start dropping away. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you have anything to say about this, but. Yeah. Um, so most of these are the countries with well-established uh, national and regional competitions. Um, but unfortunately, most African countries, as we've seen previously, they don't have uh, national competitions and they don't really have training structures in the competitions because learners really need to be trained in order to do well in these sorts of competitions. And yeah, South Africa has great training structures, but most of these countries have literally nothing. So it is unfortunate that they don't do well at the Pan-African Maths Olympiad and at the IMO. I think the assumption is also that, um, speaking to some African leaders that we did, um, the assumption is that they can do well at the IMO by doing well at PAMA, but they just basically shove their team members into PAMA without any preparation. Um, yeah. And that is kind of, it doesn't work like that. Then it really needs to be some grassroots structure in the country. And they might, because they select them from like a national curriculum final exam sometimes. Yeah. And the school maths is very different to Olympiad maths. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. So the international math Olympiad. So this is, is the the world. This is like the World Cup of mathematical events or the Olympic Games. If you want to kind of see where it fits in. Uh, so it started in 1959. It has run annually uh, except for 1980 when Mongolia was supposed to host and for some reason um, weeks before and just pulled out of the event. And then since about 2008, uh, uh, there's been approximately 100 countries, 600 contestants per year. Uh, therefore, there's approximately 50 gold medals available per year, 100 silver medals per year, and 150 bronze medals a year. These are approximate numbers. Uh, it will depend on exactly how many contestants there will be, as well as every year the, for the cut for the ratio 1 to 2 to 3. This is an approximation. We try to, with the team leaders, um, the jury, which consists of the team leaders, need to uh, vote on uh, uh, basically the best cut for this one to two to three ratio, because of course there inevitably will be some ties. So you might have 55 um, out of 600 contestants, 55 um, or on, on or above a certain mark, or 40 is a certain mark, and there's a 15 way tie between some contestants. So you either have to only award 40 gold medals or 55 gold medals. So these numbers are very approximate, um, but it's approximately 50, 100, and 150. Um, and like the Pan African Mass Olympiad, it is awarded to the top 50% and in the ratio one, two, two, three. And again, the honorable mention is awarded to anyone that uh, doesn't solve the question, um, but uh, well, uh, to anyone that didn't get a medal but solved the question completely. Um, but uh, every year there are honorable mentions awarded. South Africa gets honorable mentions in the IMO as well regularly. Uh, but PAMO has this annoying habit that sometimes there are no honorable mentions available. Uh, because the bronze medal cut is so low that no one manages to get the full score otherwise for one question. Yeah, this is one of the unfortunate uh, byproducts of not having many countries participating in the panel. Okay, this is South Africa's performance uh, represented graphically at the IMO. So the way to interpret this is the higher you are up, the, uh, the, the better you rank. Um, so the black line represents South Africa's ranking with the dots per year. Um, you can see that around um, 2019, we hit the peak, and then after that, we dropped down a little bit again. Um, the number of countries also obviously fluctuated, uh, fluctuates per year, but in the most recent years, it's been about between 90 and 100 countries per year, or even 110 countries per year. And so we were in the early 90s, kind of towards the top of this, or more towards the front end of the number of countries. 
and from time to time we still hit the peak uh, like 2011 and, 2000, and 2009 and then uh, 2019 and then other years we drop down again if we go to the next slide this is the uh, ranking um, now with the actual numbers uh, this is on the absolute ranking uh, so we've been 27th out of all the countries but in the early years there were not 100 countries so uh, the 27th is 1994 uh, in, uh, of, from about approximately 50 countries and the 1999 2000 numbers are from approximately 80 countries um, uh, between 70 and 80 countries and then um, so we've been 27 three times 28 30 second 36 um, the best we've done in recent years was like 2011 when we got back up to 41st place and 2019 when we got 2008 when we got 44th place and 2019 when we got 46th place um, but other than that, we've never gotten past this 27th. Anyway, let's go to the... Okay, so it might be slightly unfair to compare it on absolute ranking because the number of countries has systematically increased at IMO, although it's finally stabilized over the past 10 years. Um, but if we look at the relative ranking to respectively to the number of countries, okay, so 2000, 1999 and 1998 were still top years in 27, 27, 28. The other 27 have uh, fallen away a bit. Um, it is still there, but... Um, so yeah, it's slightly inferior to actually look at it from this list. And so the highest percentage we ranked in terms of the number of countries was uh, 67.9 and 67.5. Um, we're 100% of course uh, to be first place. Okay. And then, um, so this is kind of the list for this. So we've not really performed that well in recent years. It was about 20 years ago, we were doing very, very well kind of. and. Now we are either basic, we are a bit more, shall we say, um, all over the place, inconsistent uh, in recent years, unfortunately. Sometimes yeah. do well. Yeah, the best we've done in recent years is 2019. Um, as you can see, when we got basically 60% uh, in relative ranking. Okay, so, okay, so this slide is not quite the words, it's actually just a screenshot from the official website. Uh, and yes, the International Master Olympic and Pan-African Master Olympics do have official websites. Well, the National Master Olympics have official website with all the results available, all the scores are published. Um, and there's complete and utter transparency. Uh, and so, so what's important from this uh, graphic is we did host, South Africa did host, we are the only African country that's ever hosted the IMO. And we hosted in 1994. Uh, and 2014. Oh, sorry, 2014. What did I say? 1994. Sorry. Um, I just obviously every year that got stuck in my head, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we hosted in 2014. Uh, our first participation was 1992, and then the number of participants were, uh, well, the number of uh, years we participated was 31. And the medals we've won was one gold medal um, all the way back in 1997. Silver medals, nine of them in total, but the last silver medal was in 2011. And then in total, 52 bronze medals. So we aren't doing badly on bronze medals. So, and honorable mentions, we're getting 73. So that's good. But we kind of want more gold medals and silver medals, probably. And then we've won the best gold from Africa award twice, but that award was only started recently. Yeah, it was only started what, 2017. Yeah, I think it was started after the death of um, what's her name? Um, that uh, it was the Iranian fields medalist. Yeah, that Iranian what's her name? Um, can't remember her name right now. But yeah, there was a. a Iranian fields medalist. I think she was the first uh, female. Maryam Yes. Uh, yeah, Naza. No, not Naza. But yes. Um, so that award was started after her death for uh, the best goal from each continent. And yeah, we've gotten the award for the best goal from Africa twice. And that is in like five years. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next slide is uh, the IMO participation in Africa's awards. Uh, so you'll see that uh, there's the number of years that each country has participated in. These are all the African countries that have ever participated at the IMO. Uh, the number of gold medals, silver medals, and bronze medals. And then the number of honorable mentions, achievements for honorable mentions. So only two African countries have gotten gold. And each of them, or each of us, has only gotten once each. And uh, we have to keep in mind that um, there's 50 gold medals available each year. Um, yeah, and we've only gotten it once each. Um, silver medals, uh, 96421, and then there's nothing other. Uh, bronze medals gotten, so South Africa and Morocco have done quite well on bronze medals. Tunisia, not badly, and thereafter, it's dismal performance again, unfortunately, from African countries. Uh, African countries are picking up honorable mentions, please. Um, so there's a lot of countries that didn't get any medals, but did 
pick up some honorable mentions. And then if you look at the total uh, medals for Africa per year at the IMO, it's approximately three medals per year. And if you keep in mind that half the contestants actually get medals of the 600 contestants, therefore about 300 get medals each year, and Africa only picks up about three of those 300 medals a year. It's a bit dismal, unfortunately, and sad. Yeah, we really want to uh, improve this participation of Africa at the IML. Okay, so if we go back to South Africa, just to look at how South Africa is doing with respect to this, um, here's a breakdown of the provincial strike, well, the provincial uh, um, at IMO. Uh, so, uh, so the participations is uh, when uh, a learner goes multiple times, and participants are the unique participants. So the carnival participants is any learner that goes even multiple times is only counted once. And then uh, someone going multiple times is still counted every time they go as part of participations. Um, so for instance, the easiest to see is that the, uh, if we look at the northern, uh, the Northwest is the easiest problem to look at. It was one participant that just went three times. So in the participants column, it's one person and in participations, it's uh, that person went three times together. And then in Northern Cape, there were two participants. One of them went three times and one of them went four times for a total of seven times. So this gives a uh, breakdown, the column for participations, and then the column for the number of participants uniquely, and then the column for the medals. And you will see from this graphic that the Western Cape uh, has approximately 60% of the participations, 55%, which is still close to 60% of participants, and then medals also about 56 uh, percent of the medals. And then the next best province, Gauteng, with 21%, uh, 22%, and 25%. So Gauteng's actually doing better or better um, than the actual number of participants when it comes to medals. Uh, we think I'm doing slightly worse, but okay. Um, but then uh, this is also slightly, well, um, shall we say, inverted, because Gauteng is a province with uh, the biggest population, and they only have about 20% of the participants where uh, Western Cape is a total of 60%. This might also come down to the grassroots effort because the UC Maths competition started in 1977 in Cape Town and uh, the South African Maths Challenge was originally also started, uh, that started in 1980, well, that started in 1986, but it actually was an outflow of the UC Maths competition. Uh, they st started with the grade seven section of the UC Maths competition, then they actually broke it off in a separate event uh, in 1986, that was in four grades. And so that started in Cape Town and only in recent years, some other problems, although the University of Pretoria one was started 20 years ago that, or 30 years ago, that one hasn't really led to much performance because that one's uh, not many participate in it because it's right at the end of the year. It, it normally is in November, which is the time when school starts writing its end exams. Yeah. Um, so only a few actually write it, where's the uh, UCT one. Also the UCT one, what happened was there was a follow-up events of the UCT one. They, invited them after UCT competition. It was a follow-up second or third round, or second round, or um, a second or third round. And they also invited them to weekly classes. And that's actually how Liam got into the system as well, yeah. with weekly classes there. Yeah, so I took part in the UCT maths competition uh, back in the day. That was my first exposure. And then, yeah, there's these weekly classes that the top, I don't know, 50 in each grade were invited to. And that's at these weekly classes where I met Phil for the first time. He was one of the coaches back then. And that's when I found out about the IMO and the PAMO. And I, that's how I got into this whole system. Yeah. Um, and then, so there's this follow-up training for, uh, specifically also geared towards the provincial that was running. Um, and then VIT started trying to do the same idea because they also wanted, well, more representation at the IMO. So they start wanted to emulate the, uh, uh, UC mass competition. So if other universities also actually start their own one for their region, it might actually be helpful. Although the this one started for Harding and then they actually started to um, expand to the rest of the country as well as now other African countries as well. Yeah, the Vits mass competition, yeah. Okay. okay, so this just lists the top 15 schools by representation. So this is also the first column. Um, so we, um, each time someone participates is counted. So uh, you'll see uh, there are three Western Cape or four, five Western Cape schools, six Western Cape schools right at the top, uh, but the top three, Westerford, Ronnebosch, Bishops, and then um, all the Bishops um, was kind of a, uh, the number of representation, eight of the 10 was only between 1992 and 1996. Uh, so they haven't really had any uh, representation for the past 25 years, actually. So that's a historic old number. Um, 
And so pretty, apart from those top few schools, it pretty quickly drops out to, to 666, 554. And then there's nine schools that had three representations, 15 schools with a two representation, and 26 schools that had only one representation. Um, and then if you look at the next slide, uh, so uh, the same idea, but uh, where each student is just counted uh, uniquely. Um, so Ronnebosch is at eight, Ronnebosch Boys High School has had eight unique participants, uh, three of which were actually a set of brothers. And then with the this eight unique participants, bishops are uh, five unique participants. So they still the same few schools. Also, Western Cape dominated the top four schools. They are uh, Western Cape again. But then it drops up very quickly uh, when it comes to unique participants to just three and then two. And then uh, 46 schools have only actually one unique learner, well, one learner from their school who made the IMO team. And 46 is about a quarter of the total 186 participants. That we, well, 168 participations we've had. So six learners per year for 31 years. So that counts for 31 times six counts for 186 participations. And 46 of those were uh, just a learner that made it once. Uh, no, not a learner that made it once, but uh, a, a school where only one learner from that school made it. Okay. And then uh, okay, all the schools they listed are the ones. Uh, so all the schools that have uh, two unique ones are listed. So the only ones that on this year are the 46 that did once. Okay, move to the next slide. Okay, so some goals. Well, as you might have heard, we were going on about gold medals. So it would be nice to actually win another gold medal. In fact, one of my goals for years and years have been trying to get ESA to win another gold medal, but that just doesn't seem to want to happen. It hasn't happened yet, but it's gonna happen. Okay. That is the attitude, yes, we need a positive attitude. Okay, uh, we also would like to break our drought on winning silver medals because the last one was 2010, that's more than 10 years ago. Uh, we were, we've had nine of them in total and we basically got the first nine in the first um, 20 years of participation. And then since then we haven't had another one uh, in the past 11. Okay, and then we would like to more consistently ra rank high among the countries, of course. And then it would be nice to break into the top 40. We've come close to the top 40, like 41st, 42nd, or 44th and 46th in recent years, but we haven't actually broken into the top 40 again since uh, 2004. And then, of course, it's also the dream of breaking into the top 27 places. And we, we've been 27 three times, and it would be nice to actually, well, rank higher than that for change, but that hasn't happened yet anyway. We, we, I will just be happy now if we can get into, back in the top 40. Anyway, and then although we've done better with winning bronze medals in recent years, uh, it would be good to actually more consistently get uh, three or more bronze medals a year. We've had one, four bronze medals in 2019, mm -hmm. and then three bronze medals in 2020, and three bronze medals in 2021. Mm -hmm. But then again, this year, we had no bronze medals. We, well, no, this year, we just didn't have any medals. Um, so that was rather unfortunate. Um, but this year was also a rather weird year. Yeah, the paper was a bit weird this year. Um, yeah, we would like to identify talent better across the country so that we get better representation. Because unfortunately, um, there are many schools that just don't know about the IMO. They don't even know about maths competitions at all. Um, so as we said earlier, um, the, the way we identify talent is currently based on the South African Maths Olympiad. Um, so it would be schools that know about that uh, but there are also lots of schools that don't take part in, in the South fact, African Maths Olympiad. For actual numbers, only approximately 1,000 schools take part here, but it's 5,000 high schools in South Africa. Yeah, so we're currently only drawing from about 20% of the schools in the country. Uh, for high schools. For high that schools. doesn't even count the primary schools. Yeah. Uh, next goal is that we would love to have a lot more girls in the team. Um, of the yeah, 186 IMO representations, we've only had a girl representing about 21 times. Uh, this is slightly better than the IMO average. Uh, unfortunately, even at the IMO, as we saw earlier, only about 10% of the participants at the IMO are girls, um, and we would love to get that number better. Yeah, and as we said, we'd like to get just the knowledge of IMO and maths competitions out to more teachers, parents, and learners. Um, just because maths competitions are fun, and also if we have a wider pool, uh, we can identify talent that otherwise might not even know about maths competitions. Okay. Um, and if you think that maths competitions are just for the fun of it, and you can only become a mathematician if you do IMO, uh, yeah, so although many learners believe actually that uh, being in the IMO team only prepares them for career as a mathematician, 
and um, and then stop and stop basically participating in trying to make them a team because they think they can and they become a mathematician. That is actually not true. So we've listed some popular career choice of IMO veterans. So computer scientist, software engineer, that's actually the most popular one at the moment. Yeah. Along with engineering. And mathemat becoming a mathematician is not actually that popular, actually. You've yeah. become a mathematician, but yeah, I have, but most uh, most IMO veterans actually do not become mathematicians, uh, strangely enough. I know another popular choice was being coming actually, but that's also largely because we've had a sponsor for IMO for years uh, that basically promoted the idea of becoming actually for them. And then uh, some have gone into physics, becoming physicists, uh, some went into medical doctors, there have been some other career choices. One became a school maths teacher. So, yeah, but these are the most popular uh, career choices. Okay. Of course, many excellent mathematicians never participated in the IMO, and hence being in the IMO team and becoming a professional mathematician, they are not actually equivalent. And then some conclusions. So there are challenges within South Africa. Although we have good grassroots development, we don't perform as well on a high level, and we would actually like to perform better on the high levels. There are also challenges for South Africa to play a leading role in helping the African countries develop the IMO. And I believe you've been at some meetings trying to do exactly that. And then participating in the IMO as well as just the IMO uh, training program actually produces excellent candidates for future STEM careers. Yes, not just mathematics, but all across STEM careers. And I believe that is the talk. Yeah, that's all we have planned. Um, we would love to take some questions. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Liam and Phil, for a very interesting talk.